Today, we're doing a little investigation and we're going to see if we can find out what the real meaning of the monolith is. Hey, hello, and welcome to my channel. As you can see from the title, today we're talking about 2001, A Space Odyssey, and in particular, the monolith. And we're going to see if we can find out what the real meaning of the monolith might be, because I found an unusual theory that I think might explain who actually made the monolith. So let's get started. Also, I'd like to say up front that I am well aware that other channels have stated they think the monolith may represent the actual movie screen this film was first shown on, since apparently the dimensions are similar. But I am not really debating that here. It may well look like a movie screen as seen from the side, but I am more looking at what the possible origins and meaning of the monolith might be. Now, when our movie opens, we are in a prehistoric landscape apparently at sunrise, which I think will be symbolic in the next section of the film with the ape men. This is a windswept place, and there doesn't seem to be a lot going on, but there is life. And so, of course, we meet our ape men, living somewhat peacefully with the other animals. But one morning, as the troop is waking up, something completely unusual has shown up in their midst. A tall monolith with straight edges. It's an odd sight, so it causes a commotion, and they eventually come close to touch it. This strange object seems to impart some spark of knowledge to them, as soon after they learn how to use tools, and then even weapons. So big changes are happening here, and yet, it's the dawn of consciousness. When we get to the space portion of the film, we meet Dr. Haywood Floyd, who is on his way to the moon. Apparently, there has been a cover story about an epidemic at Clavius Base. But the truth is that something was dug up on the moon, and Floyd takes a shuttle to go see it where he finds out that this object was buried here four million years ago. When Floyd and the other guys get there, they walk down to see this object, this monolith. And this whole scene is very similar to the ape men's monolith scene. And then Floyd goes up to actually touch the monolith. We have to wonder, was knowledge also passed on here as it was to the ape men who touched the monolith? perhaps. But then we get a high-pitched signal, which is interpreted to be a signal sent to the third monolith orbiting Jupiter that humans have now reached the moon. So it signals an evolutionary leap. Of course, that takes us to our Jupiter mission and our ship, the Discovery One, and the two astronauts there, Frank Poole and Dave Bowman. And we can't forget our supercomputer, the HAL 9000. Now, it's significant that Frank and Dave don't even know that they've been sent to make contact with the Jupiter monolith. They think it's just a science mission. But when HAL sort of goes crazy and things go wrong, Frank is killed. And Dave ends up having to shut down HAL because he's malfunctioning. After finding out what the real mission was, Dave leaves in one of those pod ships, and he actually enters this monolith. And he enters the Stargate, a bizarre experience of lights and shapes. We even see what looks like galaxies being born. And then we come to a stop in this odd furnished room where we hear sounds that are like another language. Dave seems to be actually watching an older version of himself eating, who is looking back at him, as if they're existing in the same timeline together. Then we see the oldest version of Dave, 
And look what's here now. There's another monolith right in front of his bed. This is unusual since we are supposedly inside of a monolith. But now there's another in front of us. So there are monoliths within monoliths here. Then Dave is turned into the star child, apparently a further evolution that is happening by being near this monolith. So evolution may seem to be the point, but who made this monolith? So we can see that the monolith is sort of a catalyst for evolutionary leaps, as it was for the ape men. So that is the why. But can we answer who? Who built this thing? Well, first we have to find out about something called the Kardashev scale. It classifies advanced civilizations like this. A type 1 civilization is able to access all of the energy on its planet and store it. We aren't quite at this level yet, but we're getting there. A type 2 civilization can directly consume a star's energy, most likely through the use of a hypothetical megastructure called a Dyson Sphere, which surrounds a star to capture energy. And a type 3 civilization is able to capture all the energy emitted by its galaxy and every object within it, such as every star and black hole. Well, that actually sounds like the inside of the Stargate monolith Dave Bowman entered near Jupiter, where we saw galaxies. And in the book of 2001, when Dave enters into the Stargate, he says, My God, it's full of stars. So could this monolith have been made by a Kardashev scale type 3 civilization? In summing up, I think we can say that this monolith is acting as an evolutionary leap to the people and the ape men who come into contact with it. And it can send signals across vast distances, even after being buried for millions of years. It was obviously built by an advanced civilization, and I'm speculating that the only one advanced enough to literally contain stars and the birth of galaxies inside that Jupiter monolith would be what's known as a Kardashev Type Three civilization. But it's literally hard for us to even imagine what they or their society might look like, since we may not be advanced enough ourselves to even describe them. So maybe it's fitting that Dave can sort of hear some alien sounding language in that strange room, but actually, he never sees any aliens. Also, this Kardashev scale was proposed by Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev in 1964, so it would have been considered cutting-edge theory at exactly the time Kubrick was going into production for 2001, so I think it's very possible that Kubrick was aware of this theory. Well, that's my new video about the meaning of the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I hope you liked it. I'll be working on a new video for next week, and I hope to have that up soon. And I want to thank my awesome comment section. I love to read those comments. Thank you. I do have a personal Instagram too. If you'd like to follow me there, I'll leave a link in the description below. Also, there's a join button next to my channel name if you'd like to support my channel. But either way, my name is Shim. Thank you for spending time with me and have a great day.